What if the next trillion dollar story in crypto doesn't come from trading, meme coins, or hype, but from something the average investor barely notices today? What if the biggest clues are hidden inside the fight for the future of cloud computing? Cloud computing quietly became one of the most powerful industries on earth because it runs banks, governments, hospitals, social apps, and every AI model that people talk about today. But there's a problem almost nobody sees. The cloud is centralized and in the hands of a few companies. With so much control, it shapes the entire digital economy. But now imagine in all of this, a blockchain that tries to compete directly with the same trillion dollar industry, not by making tokens around it, but by replacing the cloud servers with decentralized compute. And that's what the internet computer or world computer is doing. And today, we're going to break down with clear logic and simple language what analysts look at when evaluating whether internet computer or the world computer could one day reach a $1 trillion market cap. And more importantly, in all of this, what would actually have to happen in technology, regulation, token economics, adoption, and the broader macro environment. By the end of this video, you'll see the full picture crystal clear, not based on predictions, not hype, just a realistic roadmap based on real world data, past cycles, and industry behavior. Let's look at open loops. What technological milestones matter most? Why decentralized compute is tied to artificial intelligence and cybersecurity? And how governments could shape this market? And what kind of timelines make sense in all of this? Let's break it down. The real story behind the $1 trillion question. Whenever someone hears $1 trillion market cap, it sounds dramatic, but the real question isn't the number itself, it's a value creation behind it all. Historically, every crypto asset that reached extreme valuation had one thing in common. It solved a problem that existing systems couldn't do well. Bitcoin solved trust, solved money. Ethereum solved programmable money. Stable coins solved settlement. But the trillion dollar question for ICP is, can decentralized compute solve something that centralized cloud providers struggle with? And to answer that, we'll look at three categories, technology, token economics, and regulation in the macro environment. Let's start with foundation. Technology milestones, ISP must deliver. A killer app, we're looking at Caffeine AI, which is launching to the masses next year, that can show real world scale. Because every major tech platform has its moment where one application proves a system's value. For Apple, it was the iPhone with the App Store. For Ethereum, it was DeFi NFTs. For TikTok, it was for the, your algorithm. This is ICP's iPhone moment with caffeine. And for ICP, analysts often say it needs a non-crypto native application that gets real global usage. A social network, a messaging app, an hour tool, or an enterprise-grade product that shows ICP can handle millions of users reliably. And this is why Caffeine AI launch the masses will provide. And this is the most important because cloud level workloads in all this aren't about transactions. They're about low latencies, stable performance, uptime, cost efficiency, and global traffic. You know, think about it. If a major application like Caffeine Ally can run smoothly on ICP for multiple years, it builds trust, not speculation, but truth based on performance. Then we're going to look at decentralized artificial intelligence and chain fusion across cybersecurity, artificial intelligence, and blockchain research. There's a trend analysts follow closely AI. The models need to be secure and verifiable compute today. Almost every AI model runs inside servers of large corporations. This creates three major concerns often discussed in industry research data privacy model integrity, and centralized control. A decentralized compute layer could help solve these issues by offering open, verifiable infrastructure that can't be altered by a single entity. And this is where ICP's focus on decentralized AI hosting, on-chain inference, you know, verifiable compute, and chain fusion become strategically interesting. Because chain fusion lets ICP interact with Bitcoin, Ethereum, Solana, 
We're talking about the biggest cryptos in regards to bond market cap and other networks without bridges or dependencies. The integrations run natively on ICP subnets. Some developers believe this could help unlock things like Bitcoin-backed smart contracts, Ethereum integrated AI agents, multi-chain applications secured by ICP's compute layer. No price predictions here, just acknowledging the engineering value in all this. And also horizontal scaling. The network nervous system or ICP's governance system manages subnets, nodes, and scaling. For ICP to function as a global cloud alternative, it will need to show thousands of additional subnets, hundreds of new node providers, stable performance under heavy workload. So this is less about, say, marketing and more about operational resilience because cloud platforms scale because companies deploy more servers globally. I see my show you can do the same thing, but decentralized. Okay, my traditional finance story, keep it as simple, human and real. Before I ever looked into decentralized compute, before I looked into ICP, I spent years in traditional finance. I sat in boardrooms where analysts would argue for hours over two things, risk concentration and systemic exposure, especially working in the portfolio management. This was our critical function. And I remember one meeting, I remember one meeting was many, many years ago where we were stress testing the risk impact of a single cloud provider going offline. A whole portfolio depended on just one company data center staying stable. That moment shaped my thinking. It showed how fragile certain digital systems really are. So when I first saw decentralized compute and I got red-pilled with ICP, I didn't see the crypto hype behind ICP. I saw a potential solution to a real institutional weakness. The same weakness my team debated many years ago. And this is the lens through which I look at ICP today. Not as a speculative asset. I don't give a shit about the price if it goes up, down, sideways. I don't care about that. But as infrastructure that either works or doesn't. That's it. You know? When we look at the tokenomics and economic drivers, the deflationary engine, ICP, it has a simple economic loop. ICP converted to cycles Cycles power compute, ICP is destroyed and burned. If the burn rate is constantly higher than the mint rate from staking and no rewards, analysts call this net deflationary pressure. Historically, assets with strong real utility burn mechanics tend to attract long-term holders, not because of guaranteed outcomes, but because the mechanism aligns with usage. So burning only becomes meaningful if applications grow which leads us back to the killer app effect. What's going to be happening with caffeine AI as we go through mass adoption? This will bring about these mechanisms to come into play. Then institution adoption also for any asset like ICP to enter into that trillion dollar conversation. Institutions play a role. Then what's happening today in Abu Dhabi Finance Week with Dominic Williams sitting with those core players discussing the future of 2030 for digital infrastructure, AI, you know, Web3, the convergence, for any asset to enter that realm, not just by buying tokens randomly, but through regulator funds, custodial products, exposure via infrastructure plays, enterprise government integration. And for decentralized compute, institutional interest, you know, might come from the cybersecurity risks, you know, the cybersecurity needs, and it's growing exponentially. Risk diversification for government and enterprises, AI integrity, compliance frameworks. You know, there are some top analysts out there that have explored scenarios where decentralized compute becomes a commodity like asset, similar to say how institutions buy exposure to data centers or cloud equities as a hedge. Not again, not predictions, just possible pathways, you know, that you could model this. You know, when we look at say market regulation and government trends, regulatory clarity. Now, for any major compute network, clarity is essential. But you know what governments are looking at? Do you know what they're looking today? You know what they're discussing today at the Roundtable in Abu Dhabi? They're discussing data privacy, compliance, audibility, cross-border data flows. This is what they're discussing. You know, canister-based storage and ICP will need clear frameworks in regions like the EU, US, and Asia especially related to GDPR-like standards. And government interest in secure compute. Think about it. Around the world, several governments have 
already explore blockchain-based infrastructure for documentation verification, cybersecurity resilience, digital identity, supply chain tracking, AI transparency, you know? No inevitability, just a trend. Governments are experimenting more with verifiable digital systems. They are working, they are testing. There's a lot of NDAs that are going on in the background that we don't know about yet. We are early. And if, and I, and I believe when, as inevitability, the centralized compute becomes part of this conversation, networks like ICP you know, could benefit from the broader interest in secure AI. And it's the only solution for secure, decentralized AI run on blockchain. Tamper-proof logs, verifiable compute, that's fully decentralized, front end, back end, 100% on chain. Cryptographic audit trails, you know, fully decentralized on the blockchain. ICP is the only solution to do that. All of this aligns with ICP's infrastructure design. And this is why Dominic Williams has a seat at that table. There's no accidents to that. Because the broader crypto market cycle for any trillion dollar discussion naturally connects to the broader market environment historically. Think about it like this. Bitcoin cycles influence liquidity. Liquidity influences risk appetite. And risk appetite influences infrastructure valuations. So if the entire crypto sector grows into, say, multi-trillion dollar territory over the many years to come, which is most likely going to be inevitable, several large platforms could see outside demand for their infrastructure, depending on real world usage. This is not a prediction, just acknowledging how markets typically function. And here's a real challenge. ICP is not competing with other blockchains. You know, it's competing with Amazon, Google, and Microsoft, three of the strongest and most capitalized companies on the planet, winning even a small percentage of the cloud market requires reliability, enterprise trust, government trust, global scale, regulation, and years of proven stability. This is a marathon, not a sprint. That's why I keep saying we are early. Now let's explore what analysts think will need to happen simultaneously. Technology must work at global scale. Applications must choose ICP because it solves real world problems, as it does, not because it's trendy. Burn rate must rise as usage rises. And that's gonna start with a mass adoption of caffeine AI, not because of speculation. Institutions must view decentralized compute as legitimate, not experimental. And I believe with the convergence of AI and cybersecurity boom, you know, they will be forced to because of that at some point in time in the future because it's going to get too out of hand. And regulation must be clear enough to avoid uncertainty. Not perfect, but just clear. The broader crypto market cycle in itself must be in a strong cycle. Not necessarily euthoric, just healthy. And that's going to happen once we get, you know, the, the major liquidity in the system, the rate cuts, we're going to get a rise in the business cycle. Each of these factors builds on each other, you know. So here's a turning point in all this discussion we're having. The real opportunity for ICP isn't just blockchain. It's not DeFi, tokens, NFTs, or meme coins. The true opportunity is becoming part of the next era of the internet, an era shaped by AI, cybersecurity, verifiable compute, interconnected blockchains and decentralized infrastructure. And decentralized compute becomes one of the pillars of this new digital era. Their networks are built specific for that purpose could see long-term relevance. This is why ICP is placed in the same ca strategic category as decentralized AI networks, security oriented blockchains and multi-chain infrastructure because, you know, it worked on attempting to be extremely ambitious, much bigger than a typical layer one blockchain, you know, for simple usage. And even if part of these theses play out over the many years, over the next three to five years, it could reshape how people view the centralized compute as an asset class in itself. So ultimately in all of this, the idea that ICP will reach a certain valuation, it's that its architecture aims at a much bigger target than traditional blockchain platforms. You know, you can't classify it as a layer one. The key lesson is simple but powerful in all this. When the technology solves deep, fundamental, structural problems in the digital world, it has a chance to grow far beyond what people expect. You know, it, it could blow out even my expectations. So think about the next time you look at cloud computing, artificial intelligence, or blockchain infrastructure. Because the systems running today's world might not be the systems running the world 
tomorrow, next year, or in the next three to five years. And that's a full picture behind what would it take for ICP to enter the trillion dollar conversation. So with that today, we wrap up today's journey. Stay curious and let your journey continue. Everything is brought to our hearts, one simple idea. The future of the internet might look very different from the one we use right now. And I do believe so personally, not financial advice. That's going to be the case in the many years out. And the choices we make today about technology, security, and trust shape the systems we depend on tomorrow. So keep questioning, keep exploring. And until next time, if this video connected with you, subscribe. You know, that's the most important because just, you know, if this video sparked any ideas, hit that like button and share it. Drop a comment below. Please, I want to hear your thoughts. Let me know what you think about all of this. And let's talk about ICP's journey on how you can get to a trillion dollars over you know, a period of time. And I generally want to hear your view. And don't forget to subscribe so you never miss what's coming next. And more importantly, stay informed, stay decentralized, and I'll see you on the internet computer. Peace out.